This is the largest potato we got out of all of these harvests. Guten gardening, everybody! Well, today's video, as you can tell by the title, is going to be a little bit different. You know, we just did a video on the simple pleasures and joys that come from gardening. If you haven't checked out that video, I highly recommend it. But today we're going to focus in on some of the failures that have happened. And specifically, we're going to focus in on one particular crop that we usually do quite well with. You know, we already talked a little bit when we did our keen garlic planting about a month or so ago. We already talked a little bit about how our garlic crop failed completely last season. We had hoped for a whole year's worth of garlic from one bed, and we got exactly zero garlic. Well, that's something we're trying to fix. But one of the things that you may have noticed as the summer was winding up into fall you didn't see as many potato harvest videos as we typically show. You know, Team Potato probably felt a little bit abandoned. And that's because several of our potato beds failed. And when I say failed, I mean we still got some results, but they weren't anywhere close to what we were used to getting in the past. And we weren't trying to hide those failures from you, but rather we wanted to take some time and reflect on what had happened so we can make improvements. And I think we have at least some speculation as to what might have caused some of these problems with our potatoes last season. So while I'm talking about this, I'm going to be showing you the footage of those harvests because I still record the harvest, whether or not they're going to be successful. We want to record everything that happens, and that gives us time to then reflect on the problems. And I do think we have some ideas as to what went wrong in some of those cases. And so we're going to talk about that. So check out our harvests while we go ahead and discuss. So we have a couple of different beds that we're going to show you here. We've got a compost bin area that we harvested. We've got our biggest keyhole bed that we harvested. And we've got our green stalk vertical garden that we harvested as well. So for our compost area, which includes these 50 gallon containers that we've cut in half, we had some really nice results in the past. We harvested some gigantic fingerling potatoes, but that area and the keyhole bed had a change to the microclimate that was a result of the trees that we have growing right beside that area, basically doubling in size. So our biggest keyhole bed, that compost area, is now fairly shaded out, meaning that those areas are only getting mostly morning sun, whereas they had a whole bunch more sun in the past. And that's a big problem because while potatoes don't want to be pounded with heat, they do need sunlight. And what we saw happening was in those beds, in our gray containers, just in general, those potatoes were actually dying back after only about 65 days. That's at least 15 to 20 or more days before they died back in the past. So that shading out really had a negative impact, we think, on what we had growing in those beds. I mean, other areas of our garden, our front garden space where we grew our fingerling potatoes once again, just fine. Some of the other areas where we weren't shaded out, they lasted longer. They did a better job. So for one, when the microclimate changes like that, whenever an area that you've had success with in the past changes because the, the shading changes, there are trees that grow up, there has to be some adaptation to that. Otherwise, you're going to end up with what we ended up with, which is a big problem. And our compost area in general seems to be a little bit more problematic when it comes to growing those root vegetables. We've had success with eggplant, peppers, tomatoes. We've even had hundreds of pounds of different summer squash, winter squash come out of the top of our compost. But where we haven't seen success, we haven't seen success with our potatoes. We haven't seen success with our sweet potatoes in those beds. So part of it may be the sunlight in that area as well, but there might be more to that. So we've had success in other ways, but not with our root crops there. Now there are a couple of other key factors that we think probably played pretty big roles in the problems we had with these various beds. One, we have for the last couple of years purchased purple cow compost. Now, Purple Cow Compost has done pretty well for us, but this past season when we got it delivered, it didn't look right. And I don't know if that means it just hadn't finished composting or what, but you, know, you reach your hand into the pile and it was really hot. Like it was still going through that process, but 
we had purchased it, we put a couple of inches of it on most of our potato areas. And in all honesty, I think that wasn't such a good fit for what we were trying to grow. So that's one thing. You know, one way that we're going to take care of that next season is we have a whole bunch of compost and compost row that's been sitting there now for quite a long time. And we're going to try to use our stuff that we know and can, can control completely. We're going to use that to put over our beds instead. Secondly, and this may or may not be the problem, but it's something that comes to mind when you think about what you're growing. The seed potatoes that we got, some of them were from our garden from last season, and they were a little bit older, but we haven't had problems with that in the past. Some of them we sourced online, but we didn't look for a grower who was in our grow zone. Like, Really, I guess what I'm trying to say is the quality of those seed potatoes was not great. In fact, we got our money back on over half of them. Just they, they weren't what we were looking for for quality. So this season, we're gonna to try to handle that problem by doing a couple of things. The potatoes we plant are going to be ones that are from our previous season's harvest, locally sourced, or we have a couple from Wood Prairie Farms, and we've heard great things about the quality there. So we're gonna start off with high quality seed potatoes. Secondly, a couple of the fertilizers or root enhancers that we use were not what we have used in the past, meaning that due to shortages in fertilizers or the time frame by which we would need to actually get everything, we ended up going with alternate brands. And I'm not going to speculate as to the quality of the bone meal, the quality of the mycorrhiza that we ended up using. It's possible that they're fantastic, but we changed up too many variables. And I think that's something that's important to understand. And I'm not just talking about growing potatoes. I just mean in general, if you find a method that really works well for you, don't go changing all these elements of it, thinking you're going to get the same results necessarily. And I think that's where a part of what we ended up with, the part of the problem that we ended up with came from. We changed too much at one time. And so we're going to go back we're gonna plan ahead more effectively. We're gonna have the, the brands that we know have worked well, the Mycos Mycorrhiza for us in the past, the Job brand bone meal that has worked well for us in the past. We're gonna go back to that to make sure that what we're doing is what we have had success with in the past. But here's something I want everyone to remember. We still had a pretty good amount of potatoes come out of our property. Why? Because we didn't put all of our potatoes in one place. We had contingency plans. We had other beds planted around. And so we were able to still bring in enough. Otherwise, can you imagine? I, I don't even want to imagine an entire winter without potatoes. As is, we can't eat them as often as we'd like, but we still have those in our pantry that we can go ahead and continue to enjoy all winter long. This is why we encourage diversity in planting, diversity in location. Don't put everything in one place, so you might end up really regretting it. All right, folks, I'm going to interrupt this video to do our 22nd giveaway in our 31 days of Guten Gardening Gardening Gift Giving. I tell you what, we couldn't be more pleased with the number of people who are taking part in these giveaways. Remember, if you want to be entered into the next giveaway, all you have to do is comment on this video or on one of our community posts between now and the next video to be entered in to win. Let's go ahead and see what today's prize is. Well, this was such a popular giveaway. We're doing it once again. Whoever wins today gets to choose one of the prizes in our list of previous prizes in this giveaway series. And you can find that in the description of this video. So again, you can pick one of these amazing prizes. Let's go ahead and see who winner number 22 is. Remember, we've still got nine more giveaways left to go, but our winner today is Sabby Jones, congratulations, Sabby. You're a longtime member of our community and we really appreciate that. Folks, go ahead and say congratulations to our winner, but don't say their name in the comments so they can be surprised when they see they've won. And Sabby, when you see you've won, leave a comment on this video and we'll be sure to get that contact information and get this out to you as quickly as possible. Thank you all so much again. Let's get back to our video. Well, folks, these kinds of things are going to happen as we go through the gardening experience. But as I talked about in the video on the joys or the pleasures of gardening, one of the best things that can come out of gardening is the ability to learn. And believe me when I say watching those potato harvests fail, as much as I still enjoy getting in there and digging around, watching them not live up to our expectations, that was a 
teachable moment where we learned and reflected and said, here's what we're going to do differently next season so that in the end, we can end up with better harvest so we can go back to what we've done in the past and really grow some great potatoes. Well, congratulations once again to today's winner. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to give us a like, leave us a comment, remember to share and subscribe, and most importantly, remember, when you're with us, you are good to grow.